Good morning, everyone. Welcome to your morning coffee. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Eric. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Wednesday, November 28th, 2018. Um, this is a general reading, all right? So it's not love or sign or, or career or anything specific. It's just whatever spirit wants to talk with us or speak with us about today. Yeah, so take what resonates, leave what, what doesn't. It is a general reading. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to resonate right now. It could resonate later. It could have been something from the past. Whatever spirit wants to talk about, that's what's coming through today. Yeah, so let's get straight to it. Um, a disclaimer, please, <laughs> please excuse the manicure. I have to redo it. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Wednesday, November 28th, 2018. All right, guys. So I am seeing green and I am seeing pink. Um, green would be for the heart chakra. There's a lot, there's a lot of heart chakra clearing going on. Um, a lot of, a lot of forgiveness has been put into place. I'm getting because also I'm also seeing pink, which is to me a, a, an unconditional love, divine love. Um, yeah, I'm hearing forgiveness is here. You know, and if you aren't in that vibration, the ability to forgive is readily available, yes? But like I said yesterday, because yesterday's message was pretty deep, pretty intense, um, and it definitely was a continuation of Monday's message, which was also pretty deep and pretty intense. But um, like I said yesterday, you know, forgiveness is more for you than for the other person, even if. You know, uh, even if you don't want to forgive them because, you know, you're still upset about what happened, um, you know, working on it ultimately would be best for you because then that would release you from those energies, from the pain, and the heartbreak or whatever. So I'm hearing, I'm hearing very strongly, very clearly, forgiveness is readily available. Okay. So that's, that's a good thing. Yeah. Also, um, spirits wanted me to point out that just because you forgive someone doesn't mean you have to necessarily like reconcile or allow them back into your life. You know, it all depends on the specific situation. Everybody's situation is different. Um, everybody's circumstances are different. But again, <laughs> they just keep saying it. Forgiveness is readily available. Okay. All right. One more shuffle and then we'll see what we've got for today. Alrighty. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm adjusting my seat. Okay, here we go. Wednesday, November 28th. Thank you so much, Spirit. November 28th. What do we have today? We've got the Queen of Wands. She is upright. Alright, so this is Aries energy. Um, this is the Divine Feminine. Please excuse the manicure, but this is <laughs> this is the Divine Feminine here. Yeah, um, in my opinion. Um, you know, this is someone who's very confident, very sure of herself. Um, and she's not like cocky or anything. It's just she just knows who she is, what she wants. And she goes after it, you know. She's not afraid to go for it. She's not, and she really, this is an energy of really not caring, you know, what other people think about you know you or what you're doing what you want what you want to do what you have to say um it's complete and total art autonomy here um passion as well i mean and this is also the divine feminine and what they're saying or what i'm hearing right now is this is representing the rise of the divine feminine okay let's see here what else ah oh Okay, um, gonna 
I'm gonna actually I'm gonna stop there because <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> Woohoo! Underneath underneath the deck is the Ace of Swords. All right. So um, now with this Queen of Wands being here, please understand that this I'm I'm this is energy. All right. This is mostly energy. This isn't really about gender. Wow. We have we do have quite a bit. So that's okay. Good. We're gonna just leave it right where it is. We've got the Queen of Cups. Okay, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, potentially. Also, the Queen of Wands could be um, any fire sign. It's not just Aries, um, but Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, yes. I'm going to put these here. Okay, we've got the moon. What else do we have? Aha, uh -huh, that's right, I did see this. The nine, the nine of Cups, the Two of Wands... And the Four of Cups so far. So, I'm really seeing here a balance. Okay. Um, there's a lot of balance here. A, a balance between fire and water also. Um, passion and emotions. Okay. Drive and compassion. Um, what I'm getting here is many of us, especially, I want to say, especially in light of yesterday's message, many, um, many people in the Divine Feminine Collective that have identified with the Divine Collective, I'm sorry, the Divine Fe Feminine Collective, um, have reached a new level of compassion, um, through understanding, okay, with the Ace of Swords here. Um... <laughs> Okay, so it's like, we're still, or you're still the divine feminine, the passionate, the fiery individual that you are, but then it's tempered by um, the, the cool, calming waters of your emotions, of compassion, of love, of understanding, um, motherly energy even. Now, I am seeing, it's interesting because what I'm seeing in the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Wands is very much like the Temperance card, which in many decks is is, is depicted as an angel um, tempering two different elements. Sometimes in some decks it's fire and water, right? So that's what I'm seeing here. It's like a, a new form of alchemy. With the moon, the moon, I'm not really getting too bad of a vibe from the moon, to be honest. Um... It's mystery, it's illusion, it's secrecy, um, it's the unknown, okay? For some, for some, it could, re it can represent a, a somewhat of a dark night of the soul situation, but this would be why I'm not, it's not looking so bad. Because of that dark night of the soul, it, it, may, it I feel like it might just be pretty minor <laughs> in comparison to some of the other things that we've been through on this journey, but... The, night, the, the, the dark night of the soul is bringing a choice to be made or it has influenced someone to make a choice that's going to lead you further towards your wish fulfillment with the nine of cups and the two of wands. And then with the four of cups here, in this deck, the four of cups feels very different to me because here the four of cups is about, it looks to be more about emotional balance just by the way that the card is depicted you normally you have one person focusing either on three cups and missing out or ignoring a, a fourth cup that is being offered to them um, in the crystal visions deck which we're going to use to clarify it's depicted as someone uh, an individual focused on that one cup instead of the three cups of normal of other decks and those three cups are empty while the one cup the main cup is full right but here we have someone that's balanced between four cups is in a meditative state is grounded you know is taking time to contemplate right this is still a contemplative card so um, you can also gain some sort of emotional understanding here by grounding yourself or by stabilizing your emotions, and that's what this feels like here. Um, and that energy is helping influence someone make a decision. This is uh, this is definitely giving to the moon here, where the moon is talking about secrets and illusions, potentially maybe some fear, fear be being represented in the um, appearance or the well, the um, what's the word I'm looking for. I guess the appearance of the unknown, uh, the unknown being around, you know, being emerged in the unknown. Um, it, could, it could also be talking about the full moon. 
um, for some of you, it's possible by, by that by the next full moon, had you made a decision, you know you did the work, you, you balanced your emotions, you came to a certain understanding of things, um, and, and you made a decision, there could be some sort of reward, something coming through by the next full moon, okay? I don't know exactly when that is. It's late in December, I'm pretty sure, but... But that balance is also represented here with the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Wands, okay? Again, this is this is like temperance to me. For many other decks, you know, it's, it's the balancing of two opposing um, energies and el or elements to, to alchemize or, um, them into like a brand new compound, substance. Alchemize, I think. Alchemize, yes. <laughs> That's the word I was looking for. But there's definitely a realization here because you have the Ace of Swords, all right? Let's see what else fell out here. We've got the, ooh, look at that, the King of Pentacles, the Eight of Swords, the Ten of Swords, the Two of Swords, my, 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 and... The Queen of Pentacles. Look at that. So we have the counterparts here. This is a very interesting. This is very. This is a very interesting reading, guys, because you have the Divine Feminine leading the charge here with the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Wands, and now you have the masculine energies here. This is very interesting. Okay, so with the masculine energies now, you have the king and the queen of pentacles, right? And what I'm getting with this is, yes, there could be some individuals, there could be some situations where there is, you know, a divine masculine. If we're talking about twin flames, we don't have to be talking about twin flames. But um, there's an individual that is in some sort of karmic relationship. Um, that's entirely possible. And because of that, you know, you have somebody in uh, feeling like they're trapped, even though, <laughs> feeling like they're trapped, even though, you know, they've come to a completion of the situ of whatever situation they're in, they still feel trapped in it. So in essence, how is that really a completion? But I'm getting that many, uh, maybe if you're feeling that energy, you are in resistance to the actual completion of the situation or um you know you are you're approaching the completion in, uh, while still feeling trapped in some way mentally trapped and then here you go here's here's the trapped element here's the two of swords this is the indecision um the almost refusal to look at something in some cases let's see here i mean in many cases, or in many decks, this person is either blindfolded or their eyes are closed. In this deck, her eyes are open. It's just they're really dark. Okay. Many times, this card talks about refusal to see something. Refusal to make a decision. Now, that, is, that would definitely keep you, keep someone in... Uh, a trapped state of mind. Okay, because look, if you make, if you think about it, if you think about it, the Eight of Swords and the Two of Swords, you combine them together, what does that make? Ten. So someone is going through a period where, you know, they're having to make a decision, they're kind of <laughs> refusing to do so, or maybe you're having difficulty doing so, okay? I'm not trying to devalue the situation here, you're definitely making it difficult, or it's definitely difficult to do so. You definitely have the Divine Feminine up here at the top leading the charge, and then you have some sort of karmic partner down here with the Queen of Pentacles. Um, now, the other thing I was picking up on is also, this could be, this very well could be a balance between masculine and feminine energy here. Okay, so for some of you,
for some of you, and I feel like this would be um, mostly in the Divine Masculine camp, but... I mean, the Divine Feminine has really been working on balancing her emotions, or uh, balancing her masculinity and femininity as well. There's a lot of balance in this situation, okay? Or potentially, there could be a lot of balance in this situation. Um, but because of this balance between masculinity and femininity, if this resonates with you, this part resonates with you, it's bringing a lot of things to the surface, okay? You have the Ace of Swords underneath the deck as an overall energy, and then, you know, with the Two of Swords, it's, it's, it's leading to... The, the, the balance of masculine and feminine energy is leading to this epiphany, this aha moment, which is creating turmoil, is creating stress because something's coming to completion here with the Eight of Swords. It's in the, literally in the process with the Two of Swords and the Eight of Swords. It's in the process of coming to completion. All influenced by an epiphany, an aha moment, a light bulb, seeing things clearly. And it's interesting... It's very interesting because you have a card with the Two of Swords here. You have a card of not seeing the bigger picture, not seeing things clearly, refusing to see things clearly, kind of being blindfolded. But the illumination is right there with the Ace of Swords. What, so what that's really saying to me is someone is having a hard time making a decision about something. Someone is having a hard time really getting through the process and reaching this Ten of Swords. The Ten of Swords often means that the worst is behind you. So what I feel like is happening here is someone is in the process of getting to the Ten of Swords, all right? But you do have feminine energy flanking the, the, the situation here. It's almost, it's almost as if you know, someone is learning lessons from both sides, both from like the Divine Feminine and maybe their karmic partner, whoever the Queen of Pentacles represents. The Queen of Pentacles could be uh, a mother, a mother figure, your mother, um, or like a wife, a uh, mother of your children. And again, this is just energy, it's not gender, okay? Um, yeah. <laughs> somebody's getting it from both ends <laughs> oh goodness and I'm, I'm sorry I don't mean to laugh I'm like I'm not trying to make I'm not trying to make fun of the situation it's just you know making light of the situation that's what I'm hearing it's stressful I get it but yeah someone in some way somebody's getting it from both ends both from their if if you're if you're a twin flame from the divine feminine your twin and from the karmic partner it's like you can't kind of can't escape it but ultimately the lesson is being learned here but i definitely feel like this row here is the the feminine aspect of the situation or the divine feminine and this row here is the masculine the divine masculine energies and as the king of pentacles you know king of pentacles is very fixed we have a lot of cardinal energy a, car a lot of cardinal energy here with the Queen of Cups, Wands, and Pentacles. Okay, Queen of Cups officially representing Cancer, Queen of Wands representing Aries, Queen of Pentacles representing Capricorn. The King of Pentacles here is Taurus, or the fixed energy. Okay, um, and so this is definitely why, whoever is resonating as the King of Pentacles here, this is definitely why you are having so much trouble with this epiphany, with this aha moment, with this change, with bringing this, to com this situation to completion, because masculine energies are very fixed and um, don't really like change as a fixed energy. Now, that doesn't mean that you're you, that as a masculine you can't be a cardinal energy, um, but in this situation, oh, the the it's more about the um, status quo and how things have been. Um, uh, concerned about what's going to happen should things change, uh, which was part of the message yesterday. Um, that's the that's the element we're talking about here. <clears throat> Being uh, the status quo, I'm hearing. They're saying it again, the status quo. Um, be, be, being very, uh, very uh, firm in 
your ways and having serious difficulty changing this. Now, this doesn't just have to be the masculine in the situation. This could There could be a feminine out there, someone who resonates as the divine feminine, who would resonate with that part of the cycle or that part of the energy right now. Okay? Because again, you could, even though you might be the, the divine feminine, you could be a fixed sign. Taurus, uh, Taurus, uh, Aquarius, Scorpio, or um, uh, what is it? Oh, Leo. You know? And actually, the, the divine is saying to me right now, the spirit's coming through and saying, you know, that's where the forgiveness aspect could really be a challenge. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say it this way. Especially since forgiveness was the main theme, you know, that they were saying as we started the reading. Um, some of you might be going through a really a dark night of the soul. And that could have it could that could really involve the need to forgive for what has happened in the situation that could potentially be throwing you off balance in a way and you're needing to balance you're needing to bring fire and water into into balance here compassion with with passion with compassion right in order to move forward on your journey in every whichever way that means for you. And it's so interesting because I'm seeing like a sort of a funnel here with these two energies, Queen of Cups, Queen of Wands at the top, all of this stuff happening in between. Like this is the out, this is the actual alchemy here, these two, these two uh, rows, and then it all funnels down into the Queen of Pentacles. It all gets grounded. That's really interesting. Okay. Let's get into the clarification section. I do want to clarify the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Wands here just to give us a little bit more information. Hmm. Okay, we're going to go start with <clears throat> the, Queen of, the Queen of Cups. And the Queen of Wands. Please clarify the spirit. Queen of Cups and Queen of Wands. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Okay. Underneath the deck here, we have the unknown, <clears throat> which is very similar to the moon, which is here in this row here. But we have the unknown. So this is definitely saying at this point, um, this is definitely talking about needing to approach the situation from an open mind, uh, with an open mind, needing to be able or willing to see things from a different point of view, especially with the Ace of Swords here. There are some things that, about the universe, about life, about the journey that we're just not going to understand. We don't need to understand. But what we need to do is follow the guidance of the universe or our higher selves because that's really what's most important. That's what's going to help us move down, mosey on down this road here, down our path. We've got the hanged man in reverse. All right, that's actually, that feels really good. The three of swords, that doesn't feel so good. The king of wands, look at that. And the ten of wands. Okay. So we do have the counterparts here, divine feminine and divine masculine. Okay. And, um, where there's a lot of counterpart energy here today, guys, between the Queen of Pentacles, the King and Queen of Pentacles, and now the King and Queen of Wands. So, what this is saying here is many of the, the, the many of us in the Divine Feminine Collective have been absolutely stuck, absolutely stuck. Or you might be. This actually, I really feel like this is a very much a current energy for a lot of us. Um, I, I I I would speak in the past tense because this is absolutely where I was not too long ago okay um and I just recently came into a balanced position between fire and water I'm very fiery and very passionate about you know what I've been through and the situation as a whole but I'm also really in a really have come to a phase of compassion here, but many in the Divine Feminine Collective have been here. Three of Swords and the Hanged Man, but the Hanged Man in reverse. And what this is saying to me, I mean, it felt good at first, and it feels good because I feel like with the Hanged Man in reverse, there's definitely um, momentum towards coming out of this stuck state. Um, 
and stagnant state even. But then also at the same time, many in the Divine Feminine Collective are still here, okay? The Hanged Man in Reverse and the Three of Swords. But the Hanged Man in Reverse is talking about, um, you know, this is stuck and stagnant because you, you've been through the lessons. You learned what you needed to know. And I really feel like for some of you, you're actively keeping yourselves here in this hanged man state because of what happened with the Three of Swords. Um, and, and you're really just burdening yourself. You're really just burdening yourself. Okay, you're choosing, and if, you, if you're keeping yourself in that hanged man state, you're choosing to carry the burdens of what has gone on with this King of Wands, okay? This officially is Leo. I'm sorry. Right, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm confusing myself. Don't worry, don't. <laughs> I'm just confusing myself. But this is Leo, right? Um, officially with the King of Wands. Could be any fire sign. It doesn't really matter. But mostly I'm seeing the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine here. And um, I see these as the, you know, the minor arcana depictions of the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine. Um, those officially being the Emperor and the Empress, right? But these burdens are needing to be released. Um, and, with the, the, and that's very much what the Epiphany is about here, okay, with the Ace of Swords. All right, so now I'm going to clarify this first row, then we're gonna do the second row, and then I believe we're gonna clarify the Queen of Pentacles. So let's go with the first row here. Please clarify spirit, this first row of energy. Pick one, oh, they're asking me to pick something specific. All right, the Nine of Cups and the Two of Wands here. Um, interesting. Trying to figure out which one to. I really just want to clarify the row. Be clearer, please. All right, we're going to go with the moon. The moon. Let's clarify the moon, please. Let's clarify the moon, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, okay. Oh, see? All right. Well, there we go. <laughs> they all came out. Underneath the deck here, you got the chariot. Yeah. There's de yeah, there's definitely there's definitely some movement going on. Okay, change. All right, um, momentum. You have the two of swords again. We've got the page of swords now, the page of wands, the nine of cups again. Look at that. The ten of pentacles. Oh goodness, death, and ouch. Oh shoot, the king of cups, but the king of cups is in reverse. Now, this is Scorpio energy, double Scorpio energy, death and the King of Cups. But what this is really saying to me is this is a death, this is a death of an immature way of thinking. This is a death of a change from emotional ma manipulation, emotional immaturity, rising up to emotional maturity, emotional awareness, um, emotional availability, okay? Um, and and for, in many cases, that could be influenced by the divine feminine that could be the divine masculine going through that but it's also for some of us in the divine feminine collective now here we have the page of swords the page of wands and the two of swords so this is absolutely why some in the divine feminine collective are having this trouble okay are having this trouble moving on um making a decision a choosing to be compassionate even and that absolutely would be so this is really all the energies of the dark night of the soul that could be happening for you right now um, with the moon here but like i said earlier the moon doesn't really feel so bad in this situation because it's moving you to the the wish fulfillment the nine of cups and the ten of pentacles but back to the page and page of wands and page of swords there is um inspiration Okay, many of you have really become inspired on this journey, have grown to some new awareness. Um, and I really feel like a lot of you are in that stage of you're, you're kind of just breaking into that self love, um, that, that energies of greater self respect. Um, and, and a lot of you may be in a position where you're kind of angry with yourselves about how things have gone down, you know, maybe potentially allowing someone 
to treat you in the way that they did, which very much would be the death with the King of Cups in reverse, also that Ace of Swords here. But you're you're at a crossroads, that's true. You do have a decision to make because you have the Two of Wands in this row. You have Wish Fulfillment twice, okay? Twice. You have the Wish Fulfillment twice with the Nine of Cups, okay? Um, and um, you're needing to balance your emotions here with the Four of Cups, in order to make a decision, okay, with the Two of Swords and the Two of Wands. Um, and so you're in a period where you're inspired, yes, you're inspired, but you're learning. You're learning to be compassionate. You're learning how to forgive. You're learning the lessons through, you know, the heartbreak, the turmoil. Um, and that's a really good thing. But it's at this point, it kind of feels like your fire... Yeah, I do want to put that there. Your fire is, or the new form, the newfound fire here is maybe creating some sort of backlash or a, a, a new blockage for you because now you're so fired up and passionate and pissed off, fed up, whatever. Um, but this is okay. This this aggression is coming through, and that's okay because it's pent up. It needs to be purged. It needs to be felt, released, and healed, right? The divine masculine and the divine feminine are really showing up in this in this reading. Okay, this is balance. This is great. I mean, so far we have the king and queen of wands, the king and queen of cups, and the king and queen of pentacles. Like that's that's really cool. <laughs> Um, but this is also really talking about a lot of us are coming into that balance of masculine and feminine energy, which to me is incredibly beautiful. So now let's go ahead and clarify this bottom row, please. We're going to, we're going to, the focus here is the king of pentacles, but we're going to clarify the bottom row, please. Spirit, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay. All right. The Seven of Wands. All right, boundaries. Whoa. Whoa. Underneath the deck is the Wheel of Fortune. This is good. Karmic cycles are changing. Karmic cycles are ending. Someone may be reaping some negative karma from being the Emperor in reverse with the Six of Pentacles in reverse. This just screams um, karmic energy to me, but also selfishness, extreme selfishness, okay? And with the seven of wands here, there, there's a defensiveness. Yes, there are some boundaries here, but it kind of feels a little unhealthy. And look at that. Now we've got the page of cups. Um, page of swords, page of wands, page of cups, but no page of pentacles. That's okay. Uh, okay, so here's the deal, guys. Um, Karmic cycles are changing. Okay, you have two completions here. You've got the Ten of Swords. You've got the Wheel of Fortune, which is the number 10 in the Major Arcana. Yes? Um, someone is still... And it's, it's funny because I was picking up here. There's just a stuck, a really extremely fixed aspect here. Someone is very much in this selfish, selfish energy, extreme selfish energy, and is having a t hard time coming out of it, is feeling extremely defensive about it. Now, what I'm picking up here is for those individuals that are in this very selfish energy, there is definitely 100% a reason for it. It's not just because they're a uh, narcissistic POS and blah, 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 this, that, and the other, whatever. We all have reasons for developing these sort of these elements to our lives, okay? Nothing happens without, everything has a reason. There's a reason for everything. Nothing is just that way because it's just that way. No. Someone ha was driven to, was pushed into, was learned or, or had learned to develop that behavior. And I really feel like for the most part, it's a defense mechanism. Okay. So what I'm getting with this energy is here, someone doesn't really want to come out of it or someone is having a hard time coming out of this energy for fear of, well, number one, for fear of retribution, I just heard. But number two, for fear of being hurt again. 
you know, of, of opening up and actually giving, turning this Six of Pentacles around and being balanced between give and take and being hurt. Someone has to overcome that. And that is the big challenge here. That is why someone, you know, someone has to see things, see, they see something clearly with the Ace of Swords. We have the opportunity to see something clearly, see something for what it is, make a change in a situation, bring something to completion, but someone is very much in the Two of Swords, Eight of Swords energy of not being able to see clearly or, for the most part, refusing to see something differently. And that is basically keeping them stuck in this energy with, of the Eight of Swords and mentally trapped, feeling like they can't change, feeling like things will never change, or maybe the counterpart feeling like things will never change. Which, in essence, is delaying this Ten of Swords or this completion. We have the Page of Cups here. This is the dreamer. A lot could be happening in the dream state for you guys. Or, yeah, look, underneath, wow, underneath the, underneath the Wheel of Fortune is the devil, all right? Codependency, resistance to change, fear, lack of empathy. Um, but I really feel like what is going to help bring this situation to a completion is some sort of apology but now many of us are well aware that you know apology is kind of hard to come by in this situation um but it's also with the page of cups it's very much an energy of needing to meditate bring that balance into the situation and and balance out the emotions learn about what it is that's really hurting you Go go back to your childhood and face those things that happened in the past, yes? All right, I want to, now I just want to clarify the Queen of Pentacles, see what we get here. Please clarify the Queen of Pentacles spirit. Queen of Pentacles, and so much spirit. Let's see what we get. Queen of Pentacles, Queen of spirit. No, nothing, huh? Nothing. Okay. Well then, you know what? Oh, oh, there we go. We got one. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> the High Priestess. Okay. <laughs> and the Six of Wands. All right, good. So there's really, there's really nothing more to really clarify about the Queen of Pentacles. Again, this is especially since I was looking at the flow of the of the the reading here, this flow of the spread. And I was saying that all of this energy is funneling down into the Queen of Pentacles energy. It's grounding everything. It's bringing things into balance. It's that it's that compassion. It's that loving, nurturing, caring aspect. It's that motherly aspect. It's that unconditionally loving aspect. The Queen of Pentacles to me is very, even though the Empress is, um, you know, the Queen of all Queens, the Queen of Pentacles to me represents most directly the Empress, okay? And with the High Priestess here, um, there's a great deal of learning that's coming into play, you know, um, there are some secrets, yes, but it's learning through the unknown here. And you have the Six of Wands, so this is a victory in balancing things out, in grounding things, in, uh, in going through all of this madness and coming down to this central position as the Queen of Pentacles, that loving, caring, nurturing, motherly aspect that is, uh, highly intuitive also, um, not afraid of the unknown, befriending the unknown, really, using the unknown as basically like your ally in this situation, you have a victory with the Six of Wands, okay? Also, also with the High Priestess, <laughs> Spirit is saying we really have nothing else to say about the Queen of Pentacles, Eric. <laughs> but you wanted us to give you a card, so we gave you a card, so okay. But also there's some more messages. <laughs> I'm being so silly right now. All right. Let's clarify. No, no, I already clarified. Sorry, guys. Okay. Now we're going to get into the oracle section. We're going to go with the animal spirit guides. Please clarify. Not clarify. Why do I keep wanting to say clarify? Whatever. Um, I guess it's a bit of clarification, but anyway. Oracle time for Wednesday, November 28th. Best messages, please. Thank you so much, Spirit. 
Ooh, Dragon Tiger. All right, so this is definitely about the rise of the Divine Feminine. All right, so underneath the deck is a Hyena. What's under Hyena? Cobra. All right. Hyebra and Hyebra. Well, there you go. The message is underneath the deck. <laughs> the message is a combination of hyena and cobra. Cobra is uh, the teacher. The 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 the. I often, I definitely see cobra as the kundalini energy. Kundalini could very well be the teacher, the guru. Um, you know, the creative force, the life force within us. Hyena talks about wearing a mask. Um, it, to a certain extent, but uh, wearing a mask in the sense of um, basically using humor to like dilute you or what you're really thinking. Oh, we've got, wow, we've got three cards here. Okay. Um, using humor to, you know, escape from your pain. Um, and that could be a good thing, you know, using, you could definitely use humor to get through it. But as far as escaping the pain, you can't really escape it anymore. You have because Cobra was there. Um, Cobra is that teacher. Cobra is the divine messenger, the divine lesson giver, right? Um, and so you you really have to just go through these lessons here. We've got the dragon, tiger, and we got hawk. Hawk has been a major message for many of us, um, those of us on the, tw the twin flame journey. And tiger did come out in the twin flame reading this past Sunday. So let's see here. We're going to start with Dragon. So Dragon would be the... No. Where are you, Dragon? Oh, that would, there you go. Okay, Dragon. Seeing one's most true self, balancing the ego. The Dragon sees everything. Its essence has been with us since before our first breath and will be there at our last. It watches us navigate the external world as well as our inner world. When dragon energy is awakened, we are courageous, visionary, and can easily drop into witty, into witness consciousness. It is almost as if we are traveling with a great friend inside of ourselves. When we look in the mirror deep into our eyes, we may even glimpse the self behind itself, the one who is watching us. This is the power of the dragon breathing transformative fire into every cell of our bodies. Witnessing this omnipotent energy, even for a brief moment, helps us surrender and let go. We let the pa the oh goodness, I'm sorry, I lost my place. We let the dragon guide us. We hop on its back for a ride, and as we traverse even the most difficult terrain, the dragon's eyes see beauty everywhere. It is said that if a yogi does not see beauty in the world, the Agni is dim. Agni is described as inner fire or sacred intelligence. May even just the mention of the dragon, stir the emperor's embers of intelligence within you. The dragon and the third chakra. The subtle energy of the dragon lives at the navel center in the Manipura chakra. Manipura translates to the city of hidden gems, and behind its gates burns the fire of our transformation and digestion. The sages believe health of the fire at the navel center is what governs our ability to clearly see both the inner and outer dimensions. I feel like this is a very specific, very special message. But for some of you, you have to deal with some sort of dietary constraints, dietary restrictions. Um, uh, that's going to help you. I feel like you're eating some foods. Some of you are eating some foods that are just fueling the fire in an excessive sort of way. And you have, that's where this imbalance between fire and water is in place here. Um, I know me personally, like I have gluten and corn intolerance, so I, I've already cut those out of my diet. They, I've been living that way for, I want to say five or six years now. Um, and that has really helped me balance a ton. Now, it wasn't an overnight. It did take some time. I did have to go through a period where, you know, my digestive system did heal from the damage, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I had to go through the purging process of things that I, you know, wasn't, really dealing with in the past and now, but now I had a, a, a better chance of dealing with it because I was more balanced because the food I was eating was not throwing me off. And I feel like some of you need to take control of that. And I'm saying that even more now because I've noticed recently that my sensitivities to processed foods has increased with how my vibration increasing and that's going to happen. Many of us are going through some serious vibrational uh, uh, upgrades. And so, 
the more the the higher in vibration that get that you get the more light that you hold within your body the less your body can tolerate toxic processed foods okay so for some people that is important right now okay whatever works best for you you don't have to cut out bad stuff all at once you can wean yourself off it you can take your time you don't have to rush but that is something that some people need to start dealing with okay next we have tiger Um, actually, I just opened a cobra, and I do want to read that, because cobra was underneath hyena, underneath the deck here, but pausing, waiting, the inner teacher. The cobra represents a teacher or a spiritual guardian. The cobra hovers and watches, ever-present, ever-protecting, ever-loving. The essence of the cobra is found deep within us in the form of the inner teacher, and manifests externally in those special guides who led us along our path. What would it feel like to be a student again? What are you ready to learn? Remember the old saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. When in balance, the uh, cobra is a student of life, humble and wise. When out of balance, cobra is a know-it-all and egocentric. To bring into balance, one can take a class or study. Okay, so now let's get to tiger here. Tiger, tiger, tiger. There you are. Tiger. Tiger has been coming out a lot lately. A lot. Especially for Twin Flames. Um, and especially for the Divine Masculine. Tiger. Lunar Force. Ease in Darkness. Feminine Energy. The Tiger hunts at night, at one with the silence, fearing nothing. This card reminds us to take, it in, to take in the wild darkness, to allow the Lunar Forces to soothe and heal our spirits. Sensuality, receptivity, and devotion are all, are all heightened in the midnight hour, and the tiger takes advantage of these boons. Spend some time in silence this evening, drinking in the potent calm. There is nothing to fear in the stillness except the awakening of your own power. When in balance, tiger is passionate, strong, and sensual. When out of balance, tiger is overstimulated. To bring into balance, one can practice candle gazing. Yes? Okay, finally we have Hawk. <laughs> All right, Hawk. Watchful, all seeing, messenger of divinity. The sharp eyes of the Hawk watch our every move. This keen eyed bird has the ability to see every little detail as well as the bigger picture. When this card appears, fate has its eyes on you, and the wings and the winds are shifting. It is said that the hawk carries news upon its wings and is sent from divinity itself to deliver it. The message should not be taken lightly, though it may seem small or insignificant. It will eventually redirect your course. When in balance, hawk sees clearly and is intuitive. When out of balance, hawk sees too much and is suspicious. To bring into balance, one must take a perspective shift. And that's absolutely, what, absolutely what's coming through here. Absolutely. Along all accounts for all sides of the equation, there's definitely a change in perspective that is happening. And actually, that's what came out yesterday in the reading, you know, look at things, it came out in the Whispers of Love deck, see things from a different perspective, from uh, 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 approach the situation with more compassion, with an open mind. All right, I'm going to close the reading with one card from the Crystal Mandala deck here. Okay, spirit. Best message, please, to close out the reading. Thank you so much, spirit. Just one card, please. There we go. We got it. Okay. We have... Huh, this is interesting, because when I looked at the deck yesterday... Um, for yesterday's reading, this card was on the bottom. And this is card number 43, Goddess Mat Matanji and Heliotrope. Already there is value. So this talks about, you know, yes, ch things change, things can change and all that. And, and um, you can go for what you want. But then there's also some situations in which what you already have has value. So this is definitely about um, changing perspective, seeing something differently, okay? Let's see what the book has to say. 
seeing something in a different way and recognizing the value in something that you may already have. We bring you the empowerment to see that already there is value. It is natural for creative energy to become excited by new possibilities, new ideas, and new forms. It is also possible, however, for creative energy to become engaged in liberating the undiscovered value within that which already exists, polishing it until it shines with divine light. Sometimes there is a need to shed the past and all associated with it completely, starting afresh. However, at other times there is something of value from the past that can, if allowed to bask in the light of your creativity, become very valuable for your future. In your exhaust, I'm sorry, in your enthusiasm to move forward in life, don't forget to take the value that already exists in your world along with it. Okay. I'm going to read gonna read this. The innovative, creative mind tends to be future-oriented. It can see how things could be. There is excitement for what is yet to be and a desire to embrace the new, and perhaps a feeling of excitement for what is unusual and stands apart from what is, has been. This can be healthy and helpful. Newness can bring energy and, up, can bring energy and uplift change. I'm sorry. Newness can bring energy and uplifting change. It is wise, however, to not rapidly cast away all that has been to make space for the new. It is a question of discernment and degree. Sometimes it will be appropriate to take extreme measures to purge the past. At other times, it is simply not necessary. And if you do not pause to consider the value of what you are releasing, you may lose valuable resources that will support your future. Perhaps it is an idea that will need to be further worked upon for the full divine brilliance to be revealed, or a connection that already exists and is going to unexpectedly rise up and support you and your divine work in some way. Whether there is an old idea half completed, an opportunity yet not yet acted on, or information not yet taken in and digested, the oracle says that something valuable is right under your nose. I'm going to stop there. All right. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I hope you all have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again tomorrow for our next cup of coffee. Yeah. Take care. Mwah. Bye.